I mean, I think it's super safe to say that the Xiaomi Mi 6X this year also will turn out to be the Xiaomi Mi A2, like it was last year with the 5X and the A1. So the main differences here with the 6X is that you get MIUI instead of on the A2, Band 20 support and also Android 1. Otherwise, there won't be any differences, not in terms of battery life or performance like it was last year. I have high doubts that anything would change besides that. So only the software experience and in case you're waiting for a specific A2 review, there won't be one because this is pretty much the same thing. So let's get into it. And as you can already see, it comes with the silicon case like usually and yeah, it's not the best one out there, but at least it's free and it does the job. Now, otherwise, in terms of design, before we get to that, I want to compare it with its closest competitor out of its own house, the Xiaomi Note 3, because already a lot of people have been asking for it just because of the same chip and a few other differences, though, because as you can see, the Xiaomi Mi 6X or A2 is noticeably taller, therefore thinner, though, and a little bit wider. Comes, though, with a completely different form factor here with 6 inches with 2x1 instead of 5.5 inches with 16x9 on the Mi Note 3. There are a few differences as well though which i will get into a little bit later but let's continue with this one it is metal and yes in case you think this red looks actually really nice i think it does in some certain sliding situations especially with cold light it looks a little bit pinkish but in real life super nice red obviously there are different colors available but i have to actually say i dig this one what i also dig more than i would have expected is how thin this phone actually is because it feels actually very thin and noticeably thinner compared to something like a Note 5, which obviously has also the bigger battery though. Now, what I really like a lot is the taptic feedback of the buttons. Super nice button clicks, super nice, also great position. Same pretty much also, even though for me a little bit with my short fingers, a little bit on the higher side, the fingerprint reader, which is also very good though. And this is easily five stars because it reacts very well. The screen turns on fast, it's super reliable. So also super happy here. We have also a little bit of a subtle curve, which makes the phone feel even thinner and even more so narrow, but obviously with two by one and six inches, it is quite tall. Since as you can also see, the top and bottom bezels aren't the smallest ones out there. So. Phones just get getting taller, even though with the 2x1, the bezels on some as cheap, especially cheaper phones don't get really small. What is also not all that small is the huge camera bulge. And I think this is the biggest one I've ever seen. In case you care about that in terms of design or aesthetics or anything else, yeah, it might be a bummer. For me, actually, since I never, while normally using it, noticed it at all, for me, it's absolutely okay. Now, infrared blaster also as well as the microphone here at the top. On the bottom, dual SIM, but no SD card support. In case you need that, you maybe need to go for the 128 gigabyte version. Then we have USB Type-C. Here, again, another speaker for symmetrics. Because, I mean, a, a microphone because the speaker is just on the right side and this is a bottom firing one. What we also get is a white only LED, the camera obviously, the earpiece and no buttons because we have capacitive ones. There is also the option for full screen display in case you want to use those gestures they actually work quite nice if they wouldn't kind of get in touch with my or in issues with my gesture app so i would stick with these but the option works fine so you can swipe from the bottom and left to right actually goes back and pressing it actually let's show this for example, if you press now and wait then you can get to the last apps for me that's still not the fastest way to get to the last app but especially the back function works quite good. So yeah, totally fine, solid solution. The bezels on the side, as you can actually already see, are okay for this price range, absolutely. Also flat front with a nice transition and build quality is absolutely top notch. It feels super solid, so well done, absolutely top in my book. Now, what about the display? And yes, I'm actually very pleased with it. It's not the brightest one with just 420 lux, but you can obviously change once again. And even though I would recommend you to go for increased contrast because automatic just boosts in bright situations a little bit weirdly, but then we don't have color temperature control anymore. But this display is still solid viewing angles, absolutely nice white level out of the box already. No complaints here. Colors look really nice and pleasant, even with increased. It doesn't look too much, but it also doesn't look level pale. Black levels are totally fine with the normal amount of IPS glow. So I'm super happy with this. It's not the brightest one, it's not amazing, but totally more than satisfying. What about a speaker though? Now, it might not be the most high quality speaker, but it is very loud and even at those maximum volumes, it still does not distort really much and it still provides a good enough, totally fine sound that I will actually give this one of very few speakers four and a half stars, which usually is just something I give to, to the dual speaker systems. So 
I'm so happy because it's so loud and still sounds so decent that I have no complaints and I was at all times satisfied, especially if I watch at my quite loud workplace YouTube videos and such during my break, obviously. Now about the headphone jack, which is not present on the phone, but with a dongle, it's the white one that actually doesn't match the phone, but it's okay. You get the same kind of quality that you usually get from Xiaomi, which means you get noticeably more volume than on many other headphones out there. And in the settings, we obviously still have those kind of headphone effects with presets and all that. So still, noticeably above the average when it comes to the sound in both regards and the same also goes for the performance because if you kill all apps you can see how quickly don't those launch and i have to once again say how much i like the snapdragon 660 it still is a super nice chipset and so close to something like an 835 and i would I, I, I love this. This is my kind of most favorite chipset. Okay, okay, I have to say the Snapdragon 636 is barely any slower or visibly, perceivably slower. But this one, I, I like it so much. It's also very efficient. Multitasking works great. It never bogs down. It never feels kind of slow. So this is already pretty much a flagship level performance on a lower end level of in terms of general food. And this actually... The Snapdragon 660 along with the 636, even though this is still a little bit better, the own category with four and a half stars. Everything with a Snapdragon 630 got demoted to four, in, um, four stars and five stars are only left over for the 835 and actually mostly now for the 845. So just to keep that in mind, I am super impressed with that performance. Also for games, it gets moderately warm because the 660 is so good of a chip. Actually, one of my favorite chips out there. Now, battery charge. 30 minutes bring you to 32%, 42%. One hour to 77 and one hour 40 you are full, which I have to say though for a 3000 mAh battery is not crazy fast, but it's still it still totally is fine. What wasn't all that great though was 15% for an hour of YouTube, which just shows that this is not quite nearly as good as for example, like a Nokia 7 Plus or a Xiaomi Mi Note 3 or a Xiaomi Redmi Note 5. So in case you want best battery life, there are better options, but this one is just noticeably thinner. And with about five and a half hours on mobile data on average, I would say, and maybe like seven, seven and a half on Wi-Fi, it is still more than fine. It still should get most people through the day, even though I would have expected just also a little bit of a better standby rate, which is for me at least the typical kind of MIUI issue with the optimization, or I don't know why the standby rate is a little bit higher, but I mean, five hours I can get at least just on mobile data and in a mixed use, six hours. So it should be good. It's not a two-day phone like the Note 5 would be or the Mi Note 3, but solid. No. The next thing would be the software, which I actually don't really want to talk too much about because I don't think many care for the 6X with MIUI. Obviously, we don't have an app drawer. We have the standard design with the theming engine. This, by the way, in case you are wondering, is running. Let's check it. Here, 9.5 stable. If we go into it, that's not it. This is it. You can see this is running already 8.1. 6 gigs of RAM, this is the version, so on, so all good. This is obviously still the Chinese version, not the global ROM or anything, but I don't really have to go into all those settings. I think there are a good amount of features. I like the UI still. Obviously, it's not for everyone, but what is for more people, even though also maybe not everyone, is stock Android. So the main difference between those two phones is stock Android with two years of update supports and security update patches and so on, and MIUI. Obviously, on the A2, you should also get Band 20 support. So this is just... the uh, phone that will have a broader appeal because this is more of a niche product because MIUI is still for most budget or value oriented people not quite as something appealing as stock android is otherwise call quality was absolutely fine reception was absolutely fine even though i maybe didn't have the fastest lte which doesn't make a difference with my slow lte anyways so that's that. Now, I'm not gonna go into the software for the camera because just as you can see here already, this is pretty much what we have seen all the time. So photo, portrait, square, short video, they didn't really change much. So this is typ typical. And this will also be the same camera you on stack on it. There won't be a change. So let's just check those qualities with the selfie cam. Now at this distance, it's not fully sharp yet, which is absolutely normal. That's kind of pretty much a thing of every camera, this distance already. And as you can maybe already see, colors look very good and the exposure is not an issue like on so many other Xiaomi phones. <laughs> and I had to just leave this one in with that look. I'm not quite sure what went wrong there. As you can see, 
even with a lot of bright sunlight, there is no extreme overexposure. And even here, nice details, colors. I like the sharpness. Yeah, really happy. And here you can see actually the bokeh mode that works way better than I would have expected. As you can see here, here, for example, without the bokeh mode and here with, and it doesn't even cut off my hairs. It got it really, really well, as you can see here with all the hairs. So in case portrait cam on a budget device, yes, absolutely. As you can see here, top job, I have to actually say. Okay, the fact that my short hair is shorter than it was sometimes before. Yep, I am fully pleased with that front face cam. Sharp, good colors, good exposure, and everything else just done right. So yeah, for this price range, one of the better ones. Now outside, the main cam, I'm just gonna barely give it a four stars, even though I was so close to giving it four and a half stars. But at the end, there were some minor things, especially for example, more landscape foot, uh, footage that just isn't quite as detailed. That's why it barely missed the four and a half stars mark. But still, as you can see by the pictures, the autofocus works very well, very reliable pictures. As you can see here, here is where it loses a little bit the details. And that's pretty much the only reason. If you mostly do kind of like closer up shots, like macros and so on, yeah. Four and a half stars without an issue, for example, here. Still a lot of details. There are cams that can do it better. But for this price range, it's such a reliable and very nice picture, I did not expect. So, <laughs> so close it missed the four and a half. I actually gave it already four and a half. And as you can see, bokeh mode actually in normal with the main cam works out okay. As you can see here, obviously not all that well. But on the, for example, Mi Note 3, the bokeh mode works still so much worse. Now, low light, as you can see here, this was kind of very early at the morning. It still is okay. Obviously, it degrades. But otherwise, as you can see here, also low light is totally fine. It's not amazing. There are brighter ones with more details and such. But I don't think we can expect this at this price range. Now, but what about the video? We have 4K. What we don't have though is 60 frames mode for 1080p. We only have six, uh, 30. But as you can see, obviously not quite stabilized at 4K just yet. It should be supported, but nothing really happens. So it's a little bit shaky. If you have steady hands, it should be fine because the 4K quality, I have to say, is actually surprisingly good for a video. Obviously, there is still some kind of typical Xiaomi known artifacting going, but if you are steady and it is, if it's mostly the content moving and not so much you, as you can see, the quality is actually very nice and clean. I did not expect it to pick up that well. Yes, maybe autofocus here. Here it gets in a little bit trouble. So it's not perfect for macro so much. At least it's, if it's not a clear object, what it has to focus on. But yeah, very pleased. Now, if you need stabilization, EIS, then switch to 1080p30 because as you can see, this is very nicely stabilized. Obviously, you lose some quality. It's just not quite as sharp. The autofocus works though a little bit more subtle, but very nice stabilization as you can see here. So if they would get this on 4K, yeah, then absolutely. But it depends on what you want. If you want stabilized, go for 1080p 30. If you want the, sharp, the better sharpness, then go for 4K 60. Now in terms of the front facing cam, also here I am actually surprised because usually what, what Xiaomi does is kinda has a slightly blurry picture and then they try to get it done with over sharpening, which is not the case here. So as you can see, still nice exposure, sharp picture. So a way better front facing cam than ever expected. Everything works out nice. And the microphone is actually quite decent. I have to say it's better, noticeably better than on the Mi Mix 2S where I don't know what went wrong, but even inside video looks fine. There is, as you can here see, barely a kind of slowdown in the darkness with the frame rate, but it is actually there. So maybe something is left here to be improved, but it's better than on the Mino 3, which leads me to my conclusion and the rating. And let me just tell you this. Why I like this one so much, it is that it's a very mainstream focused, very well balanced phone, even though it maybe doesn't have the amazing battery life the Note, of the Note 3, or it doesn't maybe have the slightly more compact premium feel of the Mi Note 3. And when I said Mi Note 3, I meant in the Note 5. There are differences, but this is noticeably thinner than a Mi Note 3, because I know there are people who want a slightly thinner phone. For most people, the Note 5, when I say Note 3, I meant Note 5, sorry. The Note 5 is not too thick. But coming from a Note 5 and switching to this, it feels noticeably thinner. And if you are okay with the slightly less battery life and some other things, you get actually the better speaker here, the better camera overall. So for about 270 euros for the, for the smallest version with four gigabytes and 64 gigabytes of storage, I would say maybe pay 
the 300 where you can get 106 um, gigabytes and 64. The biggest version then is a little bit more expensive. Oh, let me actually check. I think I got this wrong. No? Yeah, about 300 for 6 gigabytes with 64. So in case you need a little bit more RAM, even though 4 is fine, 6 will be better. So quick comparison with the Mi Note 3. Now, let me get this done. I still like the design here a little bit more because 5.5 inch with 16 by 9 just feels still more right for me with the fingerprint reader on the front. I prefer just that. Display, very, very similar actually. So pretty much a draw speaker. This one is a little bit better because it has a it has a dual speaker system, but this one sounds so good still that it's also kind of a draw. Performance-wise, same chipset, pretty much the same. Battery life is noticeably better here. I think by at least if I have that right in my head, like one and a half hours roughly like that. So that could be quite a big difference. And the software is pretty much the same, even though the camera, I have to say, I expected more from the Mi Note 3. Where, where it actually falls back compared to this one is most noticeable. The autofocus also in video. Here there were the issues with the with the overexposure of the of the selfies. And actually I have to say I like this camera more. This one, if everything is right, it has a little bit more detail than it is the better cam. But this one is more convenient, more reliable, actually works better with the better bokeh modes especially, where they did not really improve anything here. Now comparing it now, for example, if you quickly want to know that, maybe something like the Nokia 7 Plus, you get more battery life on the Nokia 7 Plus. But in general, I would actually go for this because the hardware is very similar, but the speaker is noticeable better, which was a little bit on the letdown on the note, no, it's as uh, around the story on the Nokia 7 Plus. And the performance is also a little bit better here with the latest updates. Now the Nokia could be on par and the camera was actually quite close, maybe a little bit better, but this one also maybe a little bit more mature, overall balanced. So I like it a lot. And I would say that the A2 with Android One, even though you have actually less features than on this one due to the optimizations and such of MIUI, will sell well. Great update support, Band 20, killer hardware, very nice package, and once the price, which obviously will happen, falls even to lower than 300, I think this is kind of an unbeatable package. Obviously, the big contender from Xiaomi itself is the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5. I think that's a, uh, a secure thing. But especially if you want Android 1, that's the one to go for. If you want MIUI anyway, so you don't care about the software, you get mostly more battery life. The other things I would actually prefer on this one. So either way, I like it a lot. It's not perfect, but for this money, such a well-rounded package and it's actually so close to a flagship when it comes to the performance with the 660. So whoever uses the 660 does everything just right. Okay, so that was it. I hope you liked it. Thumbs up. You have to. Obviously. <laughs> okay, so not to make this review too long, which it already is, I will tell you now goodbye. Until next time.